Today's video is sponsored by our very own Spring Store, but more about that later. Hi everybody and welcome to Daily Scuba News. So last week Aqua Breather released a new video about their Hydroid Rebreather helmet. So the video itself is about six minutes long in total and shows a exploded view of one of the helmets, which is quite interesting, so that we can actually get an idea of what's actually going on inside of one of the shiny black coverings. Now, there's no actual explanation for any of these parts at this stage. Um, it's kind of one of those videos where you expect someone to be talking over it and explaining each of these parts, but it's just some funky electro music. Uh, they just kind of flash some of the key parts as if there's supposed to be someone talking you through each of those separate parts. But we do get three cards with some words to read through. Now, I'm still a little bit skeptical about this at this stage, um, but the first card calls the Hydroid a all-in-one system. Apparently there are no oxygen cylinders and everything you expect on a rebreather is all in the helmet. There's no additional extra bits, it's all inside of that system. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about is the counter lungs. So from what I can see, these are the counter lungs and they're why the helmet is the size it is. And the breathing circuit apparently has a volume of six liters in total. Now, the placement of counter lungs on the body has always been an important factor for ease of breathing in rebreathers. Too, uh, too high and it's going to be a little hard to inhale because there's no pressure behind it. If the, uh, the counter lungs are too low, it's a little bit too hard to exhale. But having it either side of your ears, I don't know, that's going to be a little bit different and you're probably going to hear your breath a little bit more when you're in the water. Despite the large size of the helmet, they claim that its optimal dimensional ratio and ideal mass balance will allow you to forget that it was ever put on. Now, we do have to give them a certain amount of uh, leniency here. Yeah, I don't think English is their first language, but um, yeah, apparently it's neutrally buoyant, so when you put it on, it doesn't feel sort of big and clunky. But I don't know, I've never tried one on myself, especially in the water. So most of the consumables seem to come from these two small little canisters that they call RRCs, or replaceable regenerative cartridges. You have two of these reactors um, that are made from a fluoroplastic, or PTFE, and you simply place one of these cartridges, or sorry, two of these cartridges in those reactors, you screw a little uh, sort of case down, and you're ready to go. Um, so I guess these RRCs are full of scrubber. They don't really explain what they do, they just say they're RRCs, um, but I don't think they're oxygen because there's actually a small tank in the center that they kind of highlight at one point, which leads to a first stage. So I'm pretty sure that's gonna be a nitrox tank, so it's basically a semi-closed rebreather just packed into a helmet. <clears throat> They also show off a computer system uh, with a heads-up display that shows that it features oxygen and CO2 sensors. Uh, and then after that, about a minute and a half of just different color options. Now, we do get some footage of a diver in an aquarium wearing the helmet and swimming about, but not very much. And you only really get a few seconds before it just cuts away to another clip, unfortunately. And for a system that claims that you can dive down to 42 meters wearing this and have a dive of 60 minutes, I kind of want proof of that in some way. I also want to know how you control the loop volume. Normally you can just exhale through your nose to break the loop, but the hydroid is full face, so everything's covered. If you breathe out through your nose, it's not going anywhere. What we can see in the exploded view is what looks like a purge valve second stage on your left hand side. That looks a lot like a Mars MV that just connects to one of the counter lungs, not directly to the mouthpiece, but to one of the counter lungs on your left hand side. Um, but yeah, you kind of expect it to be like in front like a normal bailout valve. But this also suggests that there's a second valve in the mouthpiece that's directly fed from the tank. Now I can't quite tell from this angle, um, but what it definitely is, is, is interesting. Now, we've never really seen anything like this before and we'd love it if it could be a successful idea and design going forwards. We'll just have to wait and see. 
Let me know what you think about the Hydroid in the comments below, and if you trust it down to a dive to, say, 40 meters. I mean, I'd be bringing my trusty open circuit bailout for sure, but let me know what you think or what you noticed in the exploded view that I may have missed in the comments below. And if you want to stand out on the dive site, then don't forget to check out our Simply Scuba merch store on Springs. Springs makes all of our custom t-shirts, hoodies, and other merchandise to order to help reduce clothing waste around the world. Right now, I'm wearing our Scuba Dude hoodie, but we have plenty of other designs, so check it out. And right now, we're kindly offering 10% off of your order when you use the code DSN10 when placing your order. Thank you for watching, everybody, and of course, safe dive.